Hello, and welcome to Propel 2021. My name is Janice Rogers. I'm a consultant with The Answer Company. Today's session, we're going to be talking about the mobile app with Acumatica. The mobile app is a great tool to use when you're out on the road. Um, a lot of people forget that they have access to the mobile um, based on their security, of course. And everything that you could have access to on the web is available on the mobile app. So today I'm going to just demonstrate, show you a few things, little tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started. The mobile app is a great tool to use. Um, what I'm going to do is show a few things within the website as well as um, the mobile app itself. Um, the first thing you want to do is download your um, Acumatica app and you can just go to your Play Store or <clears throat> your local place where you would get your apps on your phone. So whether it's iPhone or Android. And once the app is downloaded, um, you will have to set up your site. So you can see up here um, where you would enter your site, your instance of Acumatica. And then in the next screen, which I'll show you momentarily, is a way to, you can log in. Now, keep in mind, um, this is just a local instance right here. That's why it looks like this. Yours probably would say HTTPS. And just make sure that you're entering it correctly. Otherwise, it won't work. Uh, once you select your instance to log in, typically it will allow you to use your fingerprint or face recognition based on your device. Um, so it's a quick way to get into the app. Now, when you first log in, you will see that a lot of the uh, icons, folders, menu options are all based on your access and um, when you log in, the same icons are also listed here. So I think most people find it easier to navigate around selecting the various um, icons here. So I'm just going to go through a few things that you can do. Again, the icons and uh, menu options that you have here will be totally based on the user's access. So if you don't want users to have certain availability, whatever they have access to on the web, um, and if it's exposed to the mobile app, um, they would see it here as well. So uh, one of the popular items here is the expense receipt. I'm just going to pop into this one here. Um, so you can see all of my expenses that I've entered or have access to maybe by other employees as well. Um, so down at the bottom, we can just click on the plus and create a new expense receipt. Now, there is a feature that you can pay for where you can scan receipts. So uh, in this case, I do have this feature. So I'll just show you how this works. So I'm going to click on the little camera there. And again, we're going to take a picture of it. If you need to resize it, you can. And then click on the checkbox, check mark. And it's going to now try to recognize the details of this receipt. So notice the fields that it's found, um, the description, the amount of the bill, and the date, which are the three main fields that we're going to need to create this receipt. Now, if you find that this is the wrong um, um, field that it's selecting, you can unmap it and remap it to a different field. Um, but we can tell here that it has worked perfectly. So I'm just going to click on the accept. And now I'm ready to um, carry on with my receipt. Um, you can tell that the system is learning your receipts. Um, you can see that it's got car and vehicle charges. So the more that you scan receipts, the learning system in Acumatica will um, help identify what these charges are. If I want to add this to a project, um, I can just scroll down and add that in here. Um, and then I can go into details if I need to uh, enter some more information, such as um, how this was paid. So um, if you are using corporate credit cards, if that's a feature in your Acumatica, you can select that. 
um, if I'm to be reimbursed, I can select personal account. Um, certainly enter your tax categories and the actual expense account, um, sub account if you're using sub accounts and so on. Uh, once you're ready to accept this, select the checkbox up at the top and that information is now in the system. So you can go back into that same receipt and up at the top we can see the paperclip and a, a little snapshot of the item. So if you click on that, you can actually see the attachment. This item now would be saved in uh, Acumatica immediately. So if we just go back to our expenses here, we should be able to see those expenses um, already entered here. And there's my receipt. So, of course, if you need to just put things on hold and come back to the office and get it um, back logging into your website, you can certainly finish things off. So it's a great way to start things when you're out in the field um, and then finish off if you need to. And you can see here that there is that file that we just uh, attached. So this expense receipt recognition is definitely really valuable if you do have employees out in the field or not in the office and able to quickly um, attach these um, receipts on the fly. Okay, so let's go back to our mobile. We'll just go through a few other items that you can uh, work with. We have our expense claims, which is where you combine a bunch of receipts into one claim. If you have a claim already going, you can add receipts to the claim. And again, this, this is exactly how it would be if you were just working on the web. Um, but you can take a look at that and experiment with those. Um, some other things that might be helpful in the field is taking a look at your approvals. Uh, you can see the menu items here. You can see all the different approvals that are waiting in the system within your work group, or you can look at your approvals. Many different items here. So if I am a salesperson and there's opportunities happening that are being updated, say, back at the office, I can see them automatically in my mobile app take a look at them, maybe give my contact a call right from the road while I'm driving my car, <laughs> um, or I can add some extra notes and attachments. You can see there's attachments up here to be able to, um, maybe there's a certain note or photo that you need to take. If you have employees in the field entering time cards, this is uh, a great way to enter their time out in the field. And of course, it can be processed then once in the office. Um, so this is my time card here, which I've started. You can tell it's on hold. And I can start it at the beginning of the week and then continue on as I'm working each day. So I'm just going to click on this summary area here. And I can see that I've got 16 hours already. I am going to enter another type. So based on maybe a project that I'm working on, project task, doing some work there. My labor item is coming up automatically from my employee setup. I'll select a cost code with the construction feature. You do have additional fields for cost codes. And the amount of time that I've spent here um, I can scroll down and say today, Wednesday, I'm going to just put in eight hours. And then once I'm done, it pops up here waiting to be approved. So then at the end of the week, my approver, if you do have those um, procedures in place. We can see here I've got 24 hours so far and at the end of the week I will uh, finish it off. So for now we'll just accept this 
And again, that will be updated in Acumatic web website as soon as uh, you're done entering that. Sales orders. If you're out in the field and need to create or edit one of your sales orders, you can do that right from here. We'll just pick on one here that's open. Um, maybe I want to put in a bit of description or notes. And just like any other app within your mobile, you can click on your um, talk to text, enter some notes for this particular sales order, which again is very helpful when you're on the road and don't feel like putting a lot of typing in there with your uh, keyboard. It makes um, entering data really quick. Purchase orders might be another thing that you uh, might be working on a lot out in the field, um, especially if you're working on projects and need to order supplies. Um, you can just create one on the fly here. So we'll just um, create one here. I'm going to just talk to text. Lumber for job site. Oops. Lumber for a job site. <laughs> Didn't quite get that in there. And then I can select my vendor. So um, I can just quickly do a search to find the vendor I'm looking for. And we'll just select this guy. And then I'm just going to go down into the document details, which allows me to select my items that I'm going to need. So from here, I can select some of my uh, stock or non-stock items, and we can obviously do search for it as well. So we'll just say we are looking for windows, and we'll select those. And I need five of them. Now, normally the cost would come up if this was set up in the system. So I'll just put in a price for now. So it lets me see the amount. I can put in my project if I need to, um, or description, additional information. So once that's done, we'll go back to, and I'm just clicking on this back arrow to take a look at this, and we'll save it. So good hardware. So I'm just going to pop back into Acumatica and we'll take a look at the purchase orders. So if we go into our purchase orders and take a look at the listing of all of my orders, we can see that um, good hardware is in here for five windows. So now in this case it's on hold, uh, which then maybe my purchasers in the office can carry on with this um, and finish it off and send it off for us. But uh, it's a great way to deal with things out in the field in order to uh, carry on without having to come back into the office and remember some of the things that you've um, you've been needing. Now the other thing you can also do with purchase orders, which obviously is going to be very helpful, is to be able to receive. We'll take it off hold, so I'm just selecting that button. And when you click on your additional information here, I have to approve it first, because that's my process. And then um, it's it's ready to be received. So while I'm out in the field, if this these items were just going to be received right in the field, um, I could do a PO receipt right from here and uh, again let the office carry on with the remaining parts of this. Um, again, this is very helpful to be able to do a lot of this work when you're not at the office. Uh, 
Um, if we scroll down near the bottom, we also have access to dashboards. So if you're used to taking a look at various dashboards out in the field, um, you can also do that on your mobile app. Now, obviously, sometimes viewing things here isn't quite as easy, but um, you can see the dashboards do um, allow you to view quite nicely from the mobile app. I am just going to um, flip my mobile app sideways so that we can take a look at some of the details a little bit easier so I can see um, some of the uh, job details here that's um, based on my dashboard that's been set up for me to take a look at. So it's really nice and helpful. And of course, this is up to date live information to be able to view this very quickly. I'm just going to quickly show you how you can extend a generic inquiry to the mobile app fairly quickly. Um, if we go into, I've got a, a very simple generic inquiry um, on right in the app here, or sorry, on the website. Um, so this is just a simple sales by salespersons. Now, if you want um, to have an inquiry show up on your screen or on the app, you can just go to customize, edit generic inquiry. Of course, you'd have to have the ability to access this. And basically, if you check this box where it says exposed to mobile app, this inquiry now should appear on the mobile app. So let's just go back to our screen here. And we're going to have to refresh this. I'm just going to do this. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, there's my new generic inquiry. Open that up, and it lets me see the details of this inquiry rate right from here. Now, this is a, a simple way to add um, inquiries to your mobile app. If you want to customize exactly how it behaves, uh, additional links or certain fields only show up, then you would need to, to customize that through a customization project. And uh, there's definitely information in the help topics on this, or you may want to get a consultant to help you with that. Um, but just this just kind of get, gets you going to see that you can add additional information to your mobile app. So I think that's um, pretty much it for today. It gives you a bit of an introduction to what you can do with the mobile. Um, if you have further questions or would like some help customizing what is available, please reach out to one of your consultants at The Answer Company. We would be more than happy to help you. Mm -hmm.